It's Mr. Jimmy Carr. I thought it was Cower Van. I thought you were saying because Car, Jimmy Cower Van, but it was because of the stand up reference in the song. I'm just playing a game here to work out. I got it. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, how are you? A fine form, yeah. Good Pretty you. well. Now, now uh, looking at your stand up material, uh, and I have done, I've enjoyed your DVDs many times in the past. Um, <laughs> 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 you always say this like I've never met you before in my life. Well, uh, yeah. I've enjoyed your work. Sir. Well, because this is work we're doing. We do know each other socially, but we're doing a proper job. But this is an interview. Yeah, because yeah, we right? don't want to come across as Brucey and Tarby. No, well, I don't want to. I, I, it's not so much that I don't want people to know I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> and don't pretend you haven't encountered this before in your life. I'm sure this was the tale of your school years. That cuts deep, ladies and gentlemen. That cuts deep. Were, really? Were you bullied at school? Obviously, but well, how? <laughs> At school. I wasn't bullied at school. You were, come on, don't be stupid. What school did you go to? Just on your own? Were you in solitary or something? <laughs> you must have been bullied looking like you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're being bullied now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a taste for it. Well, I'm I like just, it. It's because I'm fond of you. That's all it is. Uh, but hang on, though. You see, I'm being a little bit rude here, perhaps. Right? Would you consider that? No, I wouldn't consider that rude. I think, you know, okay. I dish out enough of it. Well, that's I mean, what I'm going to say. Little, you, you don't, I, do you mind being on the receiving end, so to speak? Calm down. Do you mind being on the receiving end of a little bit of your own medicine, so to speak? Oh, no, I don't mind that at all. I think pe people are generally very nice, though. I mean, I'm amazed at how nice... Like, when you go out and, you know, I t I'm on tour a lot of the time, so you meet people around the country, people are amazed at how nice I am, because I seem so stiff on stage, I you think. Are quite, you are quite robotic on stage. I think I'm you? getting better. But, like, when I started, I looked as if I was performing with a stick up my ass. <laughs> I, was really, I was just so kind of... And it was basically because I was petrified, Jonathan. Nervous. I was just so kind of frightened of being on stage. Yeah. And there's, there's no training. I, no. I, I'm not, you know, trained in any way. I'm a chancer. That's what I am. <laughs> Same as your good self. No, no, no. No discernible skill. <laughs> I, you know, so you're there kind of telling jokes and I was very kind of uptight. And so I'm trying to kind of loosen up a bit on stage. Because I've noticed your voice when you speak on stage is different to the way you speak. When you, 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 you speak, it's almost like, uh, when I was growing up, uh, my, my parents had a phone voice sometimes you'd hear. My mum in particular, when she's talking around the house, she'd be talking normally. Normally, she'd go, oh, hello. Yes. <laughs> well, I wonder if you could send it over to Lipton Studio. You still love it. It's like, what the f Who are you talking to? The I've Pope? Got, I've got a phone voice, but mine's quite breathy. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like, I like the phone sex lines because they're the only place in the world where premature ejaculation is an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pay me another 75 pence. <laughs> Can't say fairer than that. OK, anyway, um, <laughs> you were talking about my mum, right? We were <laughs> and you that's immediately leapt to a was... phone sex line. Well, I just found the voice slightly erotic. What? OK. <laughs> um... <laughs> But the stage voice is quite, it is quite like a phone voice. It is, you do speak, have well, you tried to speak in your normal voice on stage? It's or getting not? closer to that, actually. If you watch, like, the, the first DVD as opposed to this new one, there's a, there's a big difference in the performance. It's, yeah. it's slightly kind of loose. I mean, there's still lots of jokes, and, and, you know, you're on stage, so you're not quite who you'd be at home, you of know, course watching not. TV. No, a, but some comedians you see, they're very much, they kind of speak in the same way. There's maybe a slight difference, but it's pretty similar. I yeah. think it's, it's a nice thing, though, to be slightly different on stage, because... People are then amazed. Like when I travel around the place doing gigs, people are amazed that I'll stop and say hello in the street. Yeah. I think if you're someone like Peter Kay, who's so lovable on stage, you watch him on stage and just go, I imagine he's my friend. Yeah. So if you meet him in the street and he does anything less than take you back for tea, you you're feel gonna, a bit short. You're going to feel cheated. Yeah yeah. 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 Whereas with me, if I got to, if they go hello and I go hello, they go, oh, wow. I can't believe it. Because they expect you to go, oh, you, you look a bit smelly. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you smoke on stage? No, but I don't know why I did that. Why did you do that? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I could see you with a monocle. You'd look a bit like a ventriloquist doll. If you had a... <laughs> come, right there, come and sit on my knee for a minute here. Come and sit on... Come and sit on my knee? No, I, I'm not... I'm being groomed. I'm not grooming you. <laughs> I just want to see if we do look like a, a traditional ventriloquist act. Right. Have a little sit on your knee. Oh. OK, look at this. You've got bony legs, man. That's not my leg. Now. <laughs> hey, look, man, you go, look, we live in that magic moment. <laughs> get off my knee, please. I like, let's just do it like get this. Get off my knee, I'm getting a new action. Get off my knee! <laughs> <laughs> you've got a very warm anus. I don't know if you've been told that. It reminds me of my dog, Mr Pickle. It's got this big, exact same texture to it. You've got a very warm anus. <laughs> Have you ever interviewed anyone before? Surely that's not a leading... I've said that to many of the top celebrities, both male and female, and it always goes down well. <laughs> that's how you got the job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, uh, you mentioned touring. You tour a lot, you travel a lot. I know you travel around the country. Do you, when, you, when you go up and do a gig, because it's a, a stand-up, I guess you don't have people with you. But do you take a friend? Do you go with an agent, someone from uh, your agent's company, or do you travel on your own? How do you I, do I travel on my own to all Does the that gigs. not get lonely? No, it doesn't. It's nice to kind of be out on your own. It's like, because you know, I make a lot of TV shows as well. I'm making a TV show is like being in a big gang. Yeah. There's loads of people around and, you know, the show can't happen unless there are producers and writers and all these, you know, this gang of people. Yeah. And you're just the, taking all the glory as the presenter. <laughs> Whereas as a stand-up, you're on your own, just doing it on your own. It's a great sort of freedom for that. It's lovely. Yeah. And you meet people. If you're on your own, you meet people. If you go with a friend, you tend to just chat with your friend. If you go on your own, you, you're forced to chat to people but during I the imagine, day. I imagine you turn up in a town on your own like a like a wandering, a travelling uh, salesman perhaps, and sitting down in a little cafe, having an egg and a sausage maybe. So looking around, anyone want to talk to me? No, they're shying away from the, strange, the stranger in town, let's face it. And you look a little bit like someone who's, you know what I'm saying? And then... I'm like, not sure that I want to know what you're saying. <laughs> you look like someone who's been in care, you know? <laughs> I'm fine, go on, fine. And I don't know if I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I'd want, if I was eating in a restaurant, like with my family, and you came in on your own, I think I'd get the kids out of the way. <laughs> that is, that's the one thing, actually, when you travel around, when you eat in a restaurant on your own, if people want to know, if anyone wants to know what it's like being famous, yeah. just eat in a restaurant on your own. It's exactly the same thing as being famous, because people are looking it. over going, the fucking hell's he on? What's the matter? Yeah, yeah, because so it's like you're hiding yourself there. Yeah. Okay, okay. They put um, uh, Anthony Hopkins' head up behind you there, and he, he looked like he was studying you, like he wanted to eat you. <laughs> Have a look. Well, he's going to eat. Stop! <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? That you, you don't have to do anything else but that. So, Anthony, all you've got to do is go. And people love it. Do you ever do it by mistake? You wouldn't want to do it during lovemaking. It would send off entirely the wrong message, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, hey, OK, uh, so what do you do? OK, let's, let's, let's deal with this. Can we deal with something? Yeah, Can sure. we deal with an adult theme here? Can we, uh, do, you, do you mind this? When you're away from home, you're away from your partner, okay, you're on tour, a man has wants, a man has needs. You're in a strange town, okay? What do you do for that? What do, you, do you have uh, comedy fans who make themselves available to you, or do you employ someone to come to your room? And what do, what do you do, Jimmy Carr? To, to, to take care of my sexual urges. Yeah. I phone your mum. <laughs> don't, don't clap that. Don't clap that. Oh. <laughs> Hello, is that Mrs. Ross? <laughs> now, uh, your material, you're kind of, you're, you're pretty cutting edge, really. I mean, your stuff is, it's kind of, a, not, not extreme as such, but you don't seem to be um, too cautious when it comes to making jokes about just about any subject. It's a, right? And that's a weird thing, isn't it? Because you, you, people sometimes say it's offensive, but the people that come to my shows and buy my DVDs don't find it offensive. Yeah. You have to kind of really find, you have to take offence. Whereas it's just kind of edgy, but a lot of it's wordplay, so the joke isn't really about the thing. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay. Um, I saw a headline in the paper, Man Held After Rape. I thought, what, they cuddled? <laughs> now that's not a joke about anything other than a bit of wordplay there. Um, do you enjoy do you enjoy shocking though? Do you like uh, uh, when you when you do a joker and it gets you know an equal measure of laughs and gasps? Is that my a favourite good thing? noise in the at a comedy gig? And there's a few jokes in the current show that I'm touring that get this reaction. Is it's a laugh followed by a gasp because you don't think about what you laugh at. Like when people just laughed at those jokes, they, they didn't think about, oh, shall I laugh at that or not? They laugh, it's a reflex action, yeah. and, then, and then their sort of socialisation kicks in and they go, oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that. And that's my favourite thing, to kind of trick people into kind of their, their kind of baser motives. Do you get heckled, though? Do you get people in the audience who, uh, I don't know whether people come along, I remember when I used to go to comedy clubs many years ago, you used to get some people in the audience who you, you could sense had gone on because they wanted to heckle. They had yeah. heckles ready, they enjoyed it. Or, or do you encounter that, and, or indeed do you encounter people who just don't like something you said on stage and feel they should, should No, you know? I, I don't get uh, heckled in the same way I used to in the clubs. There's a big difference between, if you go to a live show and you've, you haven't paid 20 quid to come and see someone by accident, yeah. it's like you want to go and see them. So they know your material, so, they know what you're uh, going to do. They, and they like to join in, and it's a different sort of thing when people are joining in. Am my audiences are really funny. They often shout out really funny stuff. Yeah. But, you know, being heckled in clubs is a different thing, and that's sometimes it's just impossible to come back from. I've got a friend that was heckled. He was doing a support slot for someone. Okay, so the support act is going out there to nothing because yeah, the audience of. are paid to see the headliner, and this guy's just doing 20 minutes at the top. And he was getting nothing from the audience. He's a really funny comic. He's a great guy. And he was getting nothing from the audience. And someone shouted right from the back, loudly and clearly, when a punchline fell on dead air, you're ruining our evening. <laughs> That's not good. You can't come back from that. Another one that I heard was... 
a friend of mine did a gig in, this was in Edinburgh, you know, the yeah. festival, to a tiny yeah. little room of like 30 people. Yeah. And God love, he's a funny guy, but yeah. it was late at night and everyone was too drunk and they were a bit tired, a hot room, nothing. Okay, so he's there and he's, he's like, he's going through the set and he's getting nothing. And some guy just whispers to his friend, but like at the perfect moment, you know, when there's total silence and the guy whispers, he just turned to his friend and went, there used to be a pool table in here. <laughs> That's not so Skilly. much a heckle, it's just a kind of a, a thing you don't want to overhear. Yeah, that? that's pretty bad. Jimmy, uh, on a totally different subject, you're, you're a bit, if you don't mind me saying to you, you're a bit too neat. How do you mean, what do you mean a bit too neat? I'm Are just, they new jeans? They're quite new, yeah. Are they what? brand new jeans? They're quite, yeah, I bought them to come on the they're show. They're brand new jeans. <laughs> well, can't you wear them in a bit before you go out? Because it looks like you, you look like you've walked out of a window. <laughs> Not that I, I sometimes do look a little bit like an undercover police officer. Okay. I feel at, at some sort of rave. You know, well, I, <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'd like to buy some of your ecstasy, please. Because I've never seen you in. <laughs> <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've never seen you in jeans before, but they do look. You, you wear jeans a bit like Clarkson wears jeans. You know what I mean? Like, kind of like. Oh, that's. <laughs> that's a bad review on my face. Not as bad as Clarkson. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't look like you're fully confident with the concept of denim. Do you understand what I'm trying to communicate? I understand what you're trying to communicate, yes. It's like denim is a... Is a, is a is like you're a tourist in denim land. <laughs> you visited it, you quite like it, but you want to go home into something tweedy before you make up your mind if you're going to live in denim land. <laughs> this is you having to go at my dress sense. <laughs> you dress like Willy Wonka a lot of the time. Well, that's a good look. It's a good look. It's a good look. See, they're in my clothes. Let's, get, let's see if we can get this sexy decent. Let's do that. Is this... Isn't that better? Don't you think that's a bit better, ladies and gentlemen? This is bullying. Take this off. Take this jacket off. Take off the jacket. Keep your right. microphone off. Take your shoes and socks off. <laughs> Take my shoes and socks off? Why would I...? Roll up the sleeve. Let's see if we can look a bit casual. Why would...? Come on, just take your sit out. Take these shoes off. Come on. I take my shoes and... <laughs> what are you doing? Have you got lifts in these? OK. <laughs> take your socks off. Roll Why up those am I jeans. taking my shoes? To look more relaxed, more kind of... Let's go, whoa, let's get a bit funky. Doesn't he look better now? Yeah. Roll them up. Roll them up. Roll them up. Roll them up. My jeans. Roll up your jeans. How is this... In look any... how much better... Doesn't Jimmy look now much better? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. See this better? OK. OK. Untuck, untuck your shirt. Untuck your shirt. Untuck Und my shirt? Undo the shirt, undo the top button. Open the shirt, open the shirt. I don't... But there's ladies out there. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm also bringing out a diet video. <laughs> don't be self-conscious. You're looking good, he's looking... Doesn't he look sexy? Yes! Yeah. Can we just have one smouldering sexy look to the camera before we go to it? No! <laughs> Sure. Sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the comedian is the name of Jimmy's new DVD, Mr. Jimmy Carr. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm sorry about your shirt. I got carried away. I got carried away. Is it the first time my name hit the table? Look at that. Look at Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thanks for taking a break from the pornography to watch my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Now, back to jerking off.